I once again welcome you all to editorial analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 20th of October 2024. We have taken articles from yesterday's newspaper as well. So the list of articles are displayed here. In this first article, we'll be seeing about India-China relations. And in the second article, we'll be seeing about TB. And in the third article, we'll be seeing about solar module producers. So we'll be seeing them in the mains perspective along with the mains question. So without any delay, let us get into the article discussion. Now take a look at this news article. This news article talks about tuberculosis treatment. The article states that more nutritional support to the TB patients should be provided by revamping or redesigning programs in order to improve the tuberculosis treatment outcomes. So this is what the article is talking about. So let us revise about this topic from the mains perspective. Before that I have a mains question for you. What is the Nikshai Poshan Yojana? Discuss its role in supporting TB patients and its impact on improving treatment outcomes in India. You have to write 150 words and you can post it in the comment section for peer review. So we'll start with what is the status of tuberculosis in India. See India has 26% of worldwide cases accounting about 3 million annual new cases in which 3 lakh deaths happen annually. So this reinforces the severity of this particular disease. The main reason behind the severity is that the socio-economic impacts see predominantly the poorer section of the society they get affected due to TP. The reasons include overcrowding, undernutrition, poor sanitation, inadequate health care access. So in order to reduce all these impacts only government has came up with a new program named Nikshai Poshan Yojana NPY. See this Nikshai Poshan Yojana was launched in 2018 under National Tuberculosis Elimination Program, in short called as NTEP. See, under this program, all TB patients, irrespective of the socio-economic status, will be added to the scheme and they will be notified on Nikshai portal. So, when they get notified in this particular portal, they are eligible to direct benefit transfer of rupees 500 to 1000 per month. Apart from this, they will be getting additional 3000 rupees at diagnosis. So, this is about the Nikshai Poshan Yojana. However, tuberculosis is more linked towards undernourishment. So, the malnourished individual, they will have weakened immune system which will again increase the risk and severity of tuberculosis. So, this particular scheme, they focus only on the accessibility and availability part. We have to also focus on the other side of the coin which is increasing the nutrition level and improving the immunity of the patients. So when we talk about the role of nutrition in recovery, nutrition is crucial for successful TB treatment as we all know and undernourished person, they will have high risk of treatment failure, relapse and death. Many study, especially the rations trial has shows that nutritional support has actually improved the outcome of the TB patients. So the government programs should focus more on providing energy dense supplements rather than providing incentives. However, there are certain challenges that has to be overcome. Let us see them one by one. See, the first thing is limited access to advanced diagnosis and treatment. This actually happens in rural areas and in the urban areas, overburdened public health sector. This leads to poor service delivery. Apart from this, there is also stigma and discrimination when a person is infected with TB. So there are also socio-economic barriers that hinders the recovery of the patient. Apart from this, there is inefficient data management and follow-ups. See, there is gaps in tracking default treatment and under-reporting cases. So whenever a particular disease is there, we have to report it as soon as possible. So when there is under-reporting, the avenue for default treatment reduces and there will come the gap in tracking within which the disease will be spread among most of the people. So this is actually the most important step among the everything. Apart from this, there are drug resistant TB, especially this MDR TB and XDR TB cases. They have evolved them to resist drugs, which is posing a challenge in providing full recovery to the patients. Having seen the challenges, now let us see what are all the way forwards. See, the first important thing is to strengthen the healthcare system. If you ask how, we have to improve the infrastructure building and we have to bring in mobile diagnostic units to provide timely TB screening and 
treatment initiatives. Secondly, we have to focus on providing socio-economic support and reduce stigma. This can be done by implementing non-discriminatory practices and CSR initiatives. Apart from this, the government schemes like the one just we discussed, the Nikshai Poshan Yojana, it can be provided as a comprehensive social welfare program by including all the nutritional supplements, transport allowance and the employment rehabilitation for the TB patients. Thirdly, we can improve policy implementation. This can be done by cross-sector collaboration. That is, we can notify the private sectors to ensure timely intervention and then we can integrate digital health technologies and can provide default treatment through telecommunication and remote monitoring. And finally, we can tackle the drug resistant TB by bringing in new drug regime and diagnostics and strengthening the drug adherence programs. So these are all certain way for us we have to remember with respect to this particular topic. Now look at this news article. The news is that India's largest solar module producer, Vary Energies, has actually decided to take up the initial public offering or the IPO route in order to pool fund to grow the solar module production sector. So this is what the article is talking about. So in this news article discussion, let us revise about this particular sector in the mains perspective. Before that, I have a mains question for you. Let me read out a question. How the Indian market against the global market is thriving for the stable solar model man management or manufacturing? Justify. So you can write an answer and post it in the comment section. We will review your answer. So to answer this question, first we should know what is a solar module or a solar panel. So here you can see a solar panel, the reduced form of it is a module and the further reduced form of it is a photovoltaic cell. This photovoltaic cell is actually made up of silicon. Silicon is actually a semiconductor. What this silicon actually does is, it receives the photon light from the solar radiation and when this cell receives the light, the silicon, it has a property of releasing electrons by absorbing these photons. So what we call as the flow of electron, it is electricity, right? This is the very simple way how a solar panel or solar module actually works. So with this basic understanding, now let us see how or what is the status of India with, when it comes to this solar module production. See, India has only 60 gigawatt capacity in module assembly and 80 gigawatt in cell production. So from where the remaining, it is addressed from importing cells from China. So the challenges for solar module production in India is the first thing we are dependent on China in order to manufacture solar module. So here you might have a doubt if silica is the major part in manufacturing a photovoltaic cell, then India can do it right. But actually we have to undergo a particular process to convert the silica into polysilicon. So this polysilicon only will convert the photon into electricity, okay, that is electron. So in order to convert this, China has done all the initial investment that is required. It is a very high or capital int intensive industry. So it has done the investment from mining silica to converting it into a module. So this in initial investment is done. Apart from this, the infrastructure development, especially the assembly and uh, the manufacturing and the production, everything is set up by this particular country. And they are also very high in research and development. And that is why India is reliant on China in order to import the solar modules. So these are all the challenges when it comes to India in order to produce a solar module in India itself. So we are dependent on import. It has to be generated with a higher manufacturing cost and we lack advanced technology and we don't have a financial stability and we have very low research and development when it comes to this particular sector. Moving on, we shall see some of the initiatives taken by our Indian government. See the first important very important initiative is this production linked incentive scheme. So under this particular scheme, if you are developing or if you are producing the solar modules, nearly 24,000 crore will be provided as subsidy depending upon the 
amount of production of the unit. So this is what the PLI scheme is about. Secondly, basic custom duty was kept very high, like nearly 40 percentage duty on imported solar modules and 25 percentage of duty on imported solar cells. This has been done in order to encourage the domestic manufacturers. So this will allow the creation of the solar modules production plant instead of only maintaining the assembly plant. India has assembly plant but not production plan, plant. So this will encourage domestic manufacturers. Thirdly, there is an approved list of models and manufacturers in short called as ALMM. This is a very important thing. Please note it. So under this, government will enlist certain domestic produ producers and certified equipments. So only they will be preferred for any government or private projects. So these are certain initiatives that has been taken by our Indian government. So when we ask what is the way forward for the particular issue, we have to increase research and development investment in this particular sector and we have to make a lot of capital available. So for example, we saw about IPO, right? So this IPO by a leading uh, producer in our country will also invite a lot of foreign portfolio investment, foreign direct investment and etc. So indirectly it will lead to the growth of the economy as well as leading to greener energy source generation. Apart from this, we have to work on domestic production of critical components like solar wafers, ingots and polysilicons. Thirdly, we have to have a partnership of, for technology transfer and we have to uh, do a lot of collaboration with the countries in the international forums and we have to bring in expertise and provide training and skill development to the unskilled workforce in order to build a skilled workforce. And then we have to reinforce trade diplomacy by negotiating favorable trade policies. So all these can improve solar panel manufacturing in India. So, so far we saw about what is a solar module, how it actually functions, what are the challenges with respect to the production in India and how it can be rectified and we saw certain schemes. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now take a look at this news article written by Mr. Shashi Tharoor. As the title itself hints, this article talks about India's choice in a world becoming bipolar again. Here by the word bipolar, the author actually talking about US on one side and China on the other side. And in between, India is being there. So how India is handling both ties, this is what the article is talking about. So, we shall see that in detail from the mains perspective in this news article discussion. Before that, I have a mains question for you. Discuss the implication of the rise of the US and China as superpowers for India's foreign diplomacy. What strategy sh should India adopt to enhance its global standing? So, you can write an answer for this particular question in the comment section. We will review your answer. So, in order to answer this question, first we should know what is India's position while US and China is emerging as a superpower. See, India always maintain a strategic autonomy, meaning we are traditional follower of non-alignment, but in the current scenario, we have been aligning in the multiple countries, ensuring that non-alignment in a new era. So, we are actually balancing and engaging both US and China to leverage our own strategic interest. So this is the first important point. Secondly, India is one of the fastest growing economy with large number of middle class population, meaning they will attract a lot of investment fostering trade. This is happening especially with US. So India is also exploring trade agreements to counterbalance China's influence in the particular region. Thirdly, India is partner of regional security forums, for example, Quad, in which US, Japan and Australia is also a member. We saw about Quad in the prelims discussion, you can see the video. So this forum actually was formed to counter China's influence in the Indo-Pacific region. Fourthly, we have cultural diplomacy and soft power. Some of the cultural influences include Bollywood, Yoha and etc. Through this, we have enhanced our global influence. Apart from this, we are active participant in climate change, digital governance and sustainable development. So this is what the India's stand while US and China is emerging as a superpower. Now let us see some of the key challenges for India. See the first challenge is balancing relation. So while we are increasing our ties with US, we will be letting go our neighboring country. 
when we are increasing ties with china we will be letting go us so balancing through diplomatic ties is a very big challenge for india secondly we also have a border dispute a lot of border dispute in fact with china and we have ongoing tensions example is galwan clash in 2020 and etc and we are also a lot economically dependent on china when it comes to electronics especially the semiconductors so we lack raw materials when it comes to electronics and because of that we are heavily reliant on our neighbor china apart from this india also faces challenge in maintaining a strategic position in indo pacific region while countering china in the place fifthly managing multipolarity is a very big task because india has to navigate global competition between us china and even russia apart from this we have to compete china when it comes to tech especially with respect to 5g and we have also been pushing for global governance especially in un we have been asking for a permanent seat for african union but we are facing resistance from powers like china so these are all certain challenges that are faced by china when it comes to this particular topic so what are all the way forward so we have to continue all alignment actually non alignment and we have to maintain independence in decision making this will ensure that we have the strategic autonomy until the end secondly we have to strengthen multilateralism for example we have to engage with us in forums like quad as well as we have to engage with bric countries like china so this will balance global power in the region thirdly we have to enhance defense and security this can be done by modernizing defense and security and strengthening borders apart from this india should boost economic self reliance especially india should make in india and diversify its global trade partner this will easily counter china's influence in the particular region so these are all certain way forwards that you have to remember so so far we saw about what is india's position when it comes to us and china then we saw what are all the challenges faced by india in this regard then we saw what can be done that is the way forward so with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ai's academy youtube channel now thank you so much for listening